Hey guys, Level Cap here, and I'm breaking down today's Battlefield 5 trailer for Chapter 6 called Into the Jungle. And if you like these sorts of videos, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next one. First things first, the release of Chapter 6 is February 6. It adds a new map, Solomon Islands, expanding the Pacific Theater of War to a fourth map. The map was designed by the same team that did Operation Lockers from Battlefield 4 and Argonne Forest from Battlefield 1. Unlike these existing Pacific maps, you can expect a more condensed and infantry-focused experience on Solomon Islands. Game modes at launch will include Breakthrough, Conquest, Squad Conquest, and Team Deathmatch. As for new weapons and gadgets, we're getting three new guns and two new gadgets. Support gets the Type 11 LMG and it gets the Model 37 shotgun, while the Assault class gets the M2 carbine. As for gadgets, we're getting the Lunge Mine for both Assault and Support, as well as the M1A1 Bazooka. Now the Lunge Mine was originally planned to launch with the start of the Pacific content, but was pushed back to hammer out some issues with it. Likewise, many of the weapons featured in this chapter were actually shown in the Chapter 4 trailer. However, because DICE decided to cancel their competitive mode that was launching in Chapter 4, a lot of the weapons that were coming with the competitive mode also got delayed. Unlike previous chapters, Into the Jungle will offer seemingly all the weapons and gadgets as chapter rank rewards. So instead of unlocking them via weekly Tides of War challenges, you'll be grinding for chapter rank XP to get your new weapon rank. You'll get the Lunge Mine at rank 5, the Type 11 LMG at rank 10, the Model 37 Shotgun at rank 15, the M1A1 Bazooka at rank 20, and the M2 Carbine at rank 25. The first weekly challenge will give you a chapter rank tier skip. This will instantly advance you to the next chapter rank, while also carrying over your XP. Weeks 2 unlock will be a skin for the Japanese faction, followed by a skin for the American faction in week 3. Tier skips will be featured unlocks for the following weeks, though there may be more in store down the line. DICE are also mixing up how they handle elite soldier sets. At chapter rank 40, you'll unlock a new elite Japanese soldier, Misaki, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Like on all elite sets, she can be used both on maps where her faction appears and as an Axis soldier on other maps. There will be two more elite soldier sets added during chapter 6. Based on the images released of them, they look like pilots for the Japanese and American factions. Chapter 6 will launch with the 6.0 update. While it's obviously adding a lot of content to the game, it's not bringing any major weapon balance changes with it. It does tweak how chapter rank XP is earned, so you'll be getting more per match as well as more for doing well in that match. There will also be some vehicle balance tweaks, though these haven't been specific. The following update, 6.2, is where DICE will be making more dramatic changes to the weapon balance. Details are thin, but we can expect close quarters recoil and rate of fire to feel more like it did in 5.0. Guns will still do less damage beyond 30 meters than they did in 5.0, but DICE are making adjustments to the damage drop-off curves to make it more smooth and predictable. Weapons designed for long-range fights, like semi-auto rifles and pistol carbines, are getting their damage drop-offs extended, so they play their roles more effectively. MGs and ARs are getting similar treatment. Clearly, 6.2 isn't the full revert many members of Battlefield 5 community have been asking for, but it still sounds like a step in the right direction. With all of those major details out of the way, let's take a closer look at the trailer because there's actually some pretty interesting details there that you might have missed. It's also a damn cool trailer, and I gotta give some props to DICE's trailer team. They're certainly bringing it with this Pacific content. Now, one of the more obvious details you're going to see in the trailer is the leafy soldier camo seen at the start of the trailer as a couple of Japanese soldiers wielding katanas emerge from the bushes to ambush a squad of American soldiers. Considering how rough visibility is in Battlefield 5, especially with the bushes used throughout maps like Pacific Storm and Wake Island, this camo is sure to be a popular and frustrating option. It's unclear if this set is a chapter XP unlock or one of the premium epic tier skins, but hopefully it's the former. Having a skin that literally hides your character in the foliage on a jungle map sounds incredibly powerful. Now you can see from the footage that on Conquest, Solomon Islands features five different objectives. There's two located near each team's spawn with a central one to fight over between two thick areas of jungle terrain. The American side of the map features much more open areas and buildings. 
With the Americans being the attacking force on the Pacific maps, it's pretty clear they'll be attacking on Solomon Islands as well. It looks like the Japanese forces will actually have a pretty fortified first sector defense, so expect a more Pacific Storm type experience than an Iwo Jima one on Breakthrough. The jungle areas showed off in the trailer definitely have that Argonne forest vibe with multiple pathways surrounded by dense foliage and tree cover. However, it doesn't look like Solomon Islands will feature the same level of verticality as BF1's forest map, but there are some hints of verticality with the shot of a rock tunnel and a downed plane. Now, the lunge mine was shown originally with Chapter 5's reveal. It launches in Chapter 6, and as such, we have footage of it being used with the Soldier HUD enabled. And while it appears to one-shot this tank, a closer look at the footage reveals that the tank had already taken at least one shot from another or rocket launcher. So it seems unlikely that the lunge mine will one-shot a full health tank. Likewise, it also doesn't look totally lethal to the user. It does about 38 damage to the player using it in the trailer. It also has a charge-up animation similar to the bayonet. So don't expect to pull it out right next to the tank and be able to use it instantly. Against infantry, I'd imagine that it'll be lethal, but it's still unclear if it will lock your victim into a death animation like the bayonet does, or if it'll just explode assuming you hit somebody with it. In real life, the lunge mine was basically a suicide attack that killed the user or the operator. And it is neat to see DICE pulling some of these obscure weapons from the war to be added to the game, but not necessarily bogging them down with too much realism that might make them a detriment or unfun to use. Now right after the lunge mine footage, we get a look at the upcoming elite soldier Misaki. She's using a katana against American soldiers and she does have a katana as a melee weapon as seen in the game's armory. However, according to community managers, her melee weapon is just going to do normal melee weapon damage. There won't be any sort of elite bonus of having a one-shot kill katana. Now, what about TTK? Since we know there aren't any major weapon balance changes coming with the 6.0 update, it's likely the trailer was produced on some build of 6.0 update or maybe even earlier. The M2 carbine certainly looks pretty lethal based on the trailer, but throughout the video we see soldiers using the Type 2A and the M1 Garand. Neither seem to be doing much damage at range. The Type 2A looks to be doing about 17 damage per shot at medium range, with the pistol doing 25 damage. That's pretty consistent with the current damage model introduced with the 5.22 update. Now an interesting shot in the trailer shows the map in early stages of development compared to its release build. The biggest difference is the sheer density of foliage in the early dev footage. And while all the bushes and trees add to the realistic look of Battlefield 5's maps, they can often hurt visibility in a big way. Also, the early dev footage looks to show a map that has some more open areas, which may have led to a bit more chaos. Infantry not having a lot of cover can lead to frustrating deaths from vehicles and snipers. But the launch build of the map almost looks like it's using foliage as a way of outlining roads. This could lead to a lot of surprise attacks on vehicles from enemies hidden basically in plain sight. Now when it comes to tanks, it seems that DICE have finally accepted the meme that is the tank body customization still being listed as coming soon over a year after launch. One of the final shots of the trailer is of a tank with the coming soon text written on the side of it. And although this could have been seen as a bit of a slight by the development team without giving us any sort of answer as to when these tank body customizations might be coming, but sort of poking fun at it in the trailer, uh, community manager Jeff Braddock has confirmed that their plans are to release tank customization in chapter six. They just don't exactly know when but sometime this chapter. Now, overall, the trailer is very well put together. It looks awesome. I'm excited to play a jungle map. It has some sort of tones of Vietnam, if you will, for everybody who's been clamoring for a Battlefield Vietnam game, which I personally don't want, but this could sort of uh, scratch that itch if you've been wanting a more jungly based Battlefield game. Um, my concern here, though, is the complete lack of transparency as to what other content we're getting throughout the rest of the year. This trailer shows us one map and a bunch of guns that were basically delayed from previous chapters. At least two of the primary weapons shown off so far were supposed to come out in Chapter 4, plus the bazooka and the lunge mine from previous chapters. It does seem like Chapter 6 might just be content that DICE was mostly intending to release earlier, but just couldn't get it out in time. So 
I don't know if chapter six is just DICE buying themselves a little bit of time to try and make chapter seven that much better, but the fact that DICE haven't talked about anything that they're working on post chapter six is a little bit concerning and it does make me wonder, are they just not talking about it because they're afraid that they're going to fail again and not be able to deliver the content that they showed off in the initial reveal trailer? And if so, that again doesn't really bode much confidence in the dev team if they're unwilling to talk about what their plans are for the future because they really don't think they can hit their goals. Like what happened to DICE? How did they become so incompetent in their ability to hit deadlines and uh, deliver on what they promised. Anyway, I am excited to play Solomon Islands. It does look very cool and it's adding that extra bit of ambiance, a, a slightly different environment to play in, and it should round out the Pacific content nicely. I am concerned about the quantity of content coming in Chapter 6. Uh, only a handful of new weapons, one new map. If that's all it is, it could be a relatively light chapter. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this update video and trailer breakdown. Let me know if there's anything else in the trailer that you think we might have missed and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.